Hey guys, this is Kaijin Hunter. I recently realized that you can tell a monster's overall HP by the amount of damage that a wall slam does, and it got me into hours and hours of testing, and I found out that I really didn't know the ins and outs of the Clutch Claw. Well, now I do, and I feel like a superhero, so I wanted to share that with you guys as well. Welcome to my master class on the Clutch Claw. First things first, I am battling a cold, so if my voice sounds a little weird, that's why. For this video, I'm going to assume that you already know the basics. When you clutch claw on a monster, you can cancel out of it, move around, do your weapon's special clutch claw attack, hit the face with the claw to reposition it, or unload your slinger ammo to its face to send it flying forward. First topic, clutching on a monster. The two bow guns have a longer clutch claw than all the other weapons, including bow, probably due to the fact that they are normally fighting at a greater distance. Here's the maximum distance for melee weapons or bow. And here is the maximum distance for a bow gun. Tip. Clawing onto or staying on a monster can be quite challenging if you don't know the patterns of the monster or you're desperate to tenderize a part but the monster is enraged. At the start of the hunt you know the monster is going to roar the moment it spots you so if you're not sporting earplugs you can use the rock steady mantle instead. If you're in the middle of the hunt, the Temporal Mantle is a fabulous choice when you want to start tenderizing as it will make you immune to most attacks. Second topic, tenderizing. A clutch attack from a heavy weapon will do 10 points of tenderized damage, and a light weapon will do 5 points, and the claw itself does 2. Once you have 10 points, the body part will become wounded and tender, making it weaker to attacks. The effect used to last for 90 seconds, but since the Fatalis update, it now lasts a whopping 180 seconds, so a full 3 minutes. Due to the way that the point system works, you could just do 5 claw attacks, or 2 claw attacks and then the light weapon attack to tenderize a part. But Capcom also added in this craftable decoration called the Clutch Claw Boost, which is insane. It makes it so that the light weapons deal 10 points of tenderized damage, and heavy weapons also drop ammo just like the light weapons do. This is kind of convenient for heavy weapons, but it's a massive power boost to light weapons, and a staple skill that everybody should run. Light weapon attacks are generally really fast to do, which is why they required you to do two of them instead of one in order to tenderize a part. So not only can you tenderize a part in just one hit, but you'll also get ammo as well. Where heavy weapons generally don't have that much utility used for slinger ammo, the light weapons generally do, so this added bonus is awesome. So yeah, heavy weapons, it's kind of useful, light weapons, this is a power skill. So how much of a difference does tenderizing a part actually make? The bonus is calculated by this formula, 100 minus the part weakness times 25% and just throw away the decimals. It is worth noting that Fatalis and Safajiva have a special formula in which they reduce the bonus that you get by 5 points. So if the part of a monster is rated at 27%, meaning that it only takes 27% damage, then the bonus would be 18, and the part then becomes a 45 hit zone. That's enough to activate Weakness Exploit. The harder the part is, the bigger the benefit is outside of Weakness Exploit. Like a 20 zone becomes a 40, and that's double the damage, and a 60 zone becomes a 70 zone, which is still a respectable 16.7% damage increase. But there's another reason to tenderize a part besides making it take more damage and triggering weakness exploit, which brings us to the next topic. Topic 3, Wall Bangs. When you're on the head of a monster with the Clutch Claw, you can use claw attacks to move in 90 degrees in the opposite direction. And then if you're close enough to a wall, just press the right trigger to unload your slinger ammo and send them flying into it. If they hit the wall, they'll take big damage and fall to the ground. A wall bang does 2% of the monster's max HP as damage, so you can actually use this to know the HP of a monster. For example, if the wall slam does 540 damage, then you calculate by taking the damage and dividing it by 2%. So 540 divided by 2% is 27,000 health. You may also notice that a wall bang does more damage later in the hunt, and that's because it's due to part break bonuses. If you've broken one part of the monster, a wall bank will do 2.5% of the max HP as damage, and if you have broken two parts of the monster, you do the maximum, which is 3%. I'm talking actual breaks though, not like breaking off the bones or the spikes of a monster, or mud on like a Baroth, we're talking like wings, the back, and something like that. For most quests, a monster's HP will differ each time, as will its size, so you might see some fluctuation. Tip 1, Tenderized Parts. 
The true power of the wall bank though is what it does to the other parts of the body that are tenderized. For the head of the monster, it doesn't make a difference if the head is tenderized or not, the damage is going to be the same. Of course, having it tenderized is great because you can punish it after when it topples over. But when you wall bang, every other part of the monster that is tenderized will take the exact same amount of damage, but as bonus part break damage. So let's say the back of the monster will break at 1300 damage and you tenderize it and do three wall bangs at 500 damage each. That will break the back. You won't be doing damage towards the overall health of the monster, but this is a fabulous way to break many parts of the monster very fast. I have tried this with and without the part breaker skill and I didn't notice any difference. Another good example that a lot of people shared online was called Tarath. Apparently by tenderizing her parts at the beginning of the hunt and then just wall slamming her, you'll see most of the parts just pop right off. Or slap on a geologist's decoration and go to the guidey lands for double the drop items, just throw on a temporal mantle, tenderize each part of the monster, then wall slam them a few times and you'll get dozens of drops. It really is amazing. Please note that the bonus part breaker damage appears to be blunt type. You can tenderize the tail of a monster and slam it into the wall a dozen times and the tail is not going to get any closer to breaking. Trust me, I tried. Tip 2. Understanding Clutch Rage While a monster will enrage after taking enough damage, there's another way to anger a monster and that is using the Clutch Claw. There's a special counter that will trigger its rage. Each claw attack is worth 35 points, and each flint shot is worth 30 plus 30, so a total of 60 points. Once you hit 100, the monster will get enraged. This is important to know for a few reasons. First, you can actually do two wall bangs in a row. Say you start with a claw and then a bang, that's 95 points. Provided your cat or another player doesn't enrage the monster as you set up for the second one, you can very quickly just clutch and slam them into the wall a second time. If you go over the limit with claw swipes, you do have a small sort of grace window in order to do that flinch shot afterwards, which is why you could do something like claw flinch shot and then claw flinch shot. Also, for example, if you do three claw swipes in a row, it will instantly enrage any monster, which is fabulous if you run the agitator skill and you want that bonus attack power. Plus, monsters when they're enraged generally take more damage as well. But you can do three claws and a flinch shot due to that small grace period for the flinch. Tip 3. Special Exhaust After doing enough damage to the monster, it'll do a special exhaust animation. If you clutch claw onto the monster during this animation, it will actually last longer, even if you just drop off and start hitting them afterwards. So if you're hunting online in particular, make sure to clutch on the monster if you see this animation for an increase of damage windows. Do keep in mind though that this animation can occur when they're enraged, so even if they're blinking red on the map, which means that they're enraged, and you clutch on them during this animation, you're still not going to be able to use that repositioning or the wall slam. And my fourth and final tip for this topic is Sleep Resets Rage. If you want to go crazy and quickly break most of the parts of a monster, or perhaps just to leave the quest and collect your rewards, or to make the hunt easier, you can use Sleep to reset the rage of a monster. That means you can do two more wall bangs. With a light bow gun and sleep attack up, you can very easily do like half a dozen or more wall bangs. And that covers my masterclass tips for using the clutch claw. To finish this off, here is a fun play around set which I made, which I call the Kabedon set. In Japanese, the flinch shot is technically called Futobashi, which means to send the monster flying, but fans nicknamed the wall bang as Kabedon, which is Kabe, which means wall, and Dong, which is the sound of it makes of slamming something against the wall. I run level 5 earplugs so that I'm never interrupted by a roar. Level 5 slinger capacity makes it so that after you do a wall slam, you still have ammo left for another. Sleep attack level 4 with the Beotodus light bow gun makes most monsters sleep with just two shots. Free element and ammo up is just good for the bow gun. Special ammo boost so I can get that bonus damage on my special blast ammo. And clutch claw boost, of course. The rest is all just bonus stuff from the armor set that I have on. I use the Beotodas light bow gun with three recoil mods and one reload mod, and this bow gun is also very good at paralysis, so I generally put two paralysis decos on the temporal mantle just for fun. Using this set, I can sleep a monster over and over again and abuse the wall bang system to break all of its parts except the tail. It's great stress relief and fun to do, and it really comes in handy for quick farming of the guiding lands when paired with a single geologist deco for double the drops. I hope you did enjoy this video, hopefully you found those tips helpful, and until next time, happy clutching.